this world is a lot of people will teeter-totter diet and their self, it's self-sabotage is what it is. What I want to go over with that is I see this, I've seen it with some of my previous clients, I've seen it with some of my current clients, but you know, usually that's, they don't tell me about it if they are doing it, but it's usually like friends and you know, other competitors that I hear and I see this type of behavior from. And to me, I just, I can't grasp it. I, I don't understand it. I, I understand hunger pain just as much as anybody does. Cause when I diet, I could gnaw my own, sorry, I could gnaw my own arm off. But, you know, what I'm talking about is people get on a plan, they follow it a few days, and then that hunger starts to kick in, it starts building up. And depending on what you do for a living, you know, if you're a very active, busy person, you're probably not thinking about it that much. But if you're someone who sits at a desk or sits at a computer, like what I did when I was competing, you know, I was a loan officer in the beginning, and then after that I became a sponsored athlete, so I was basically sitting in front of a TV being a, a lazy person. Um, so my mind tended to drift towards food. However, one thing I want to point out is, you know, either you can, you can somewhat mitigate this if you're going to be someone who cheats on your diet, but again, it comes back to a why. And the reason I say a why is, think about if you have a 1500 calorie or 2000 calorie cheat meal and you set yourself back, right? Set yourself back to your goals, whether your goal is just get in shape, look better, or whether your goal is to do a competition or just simply get healthier. So when you set yourself back, you know, you're looking at like an hour, sometimes maybe two hours of cardio. So for me, I would much rather skip that 10 minutes or sometimes even less if you're a fast eater. I would rather skip all that, that 10 minutes of pleasure from getting that meal in and that satisfaction is to have to go in and do two hours of cardio just to break even. Like you, you're not getting ahead, you're just breaking even to where you was. You're taxing your knees, taxing your feet, taxing your hips, your lower back. And it's also time out of your day that you probably didn't have to, you didn't expect that you were gonna spend that in the gym extra. So I never really did understand that mentality until I started actually competing in bodybuilding. I remember when I was a teenager, way back, I don't know if you guys remember this or not. Uh, most of y'all probably won't. Most of y'all that did follow me still won't even know about this, but back in the day, bodybuilding.com used to have these little contests that once a week they would pick like the male bodybuilder of the week, female bodybuilder of the week, and they would do the teen bodybuilder of the week. And I actually won that at 15 years old. I couldn't believe it. That was like the first thing I ever won in my entire life. You know, like I, it, it was, I honestly thought they, they screwed up and sent the email to the wrong person when they told me they chose me. Like, I'm being serious. Because I didn't think I looked good enough to qualify for something like that. But you know, as a teenager, I was one of those kids It was like, one week I'm on HST training, next week I'm on Max OT, then I'm on German volume training. I'm trying to find like the quick fix, like what's gonna get me to where I wanna be as fast as I possibly can. I wasn't consistent with anything. But I was still seeing progress. I was getting those newbie gains. You know, as a teenager, my testosterone level was probably over a thousand at that point. So probably higher than some guys when they actually take like low dose cycles, which is why I grew at a rapid pace as a teenager. I had no idea what I was doing at all. I thought I did. I probably, if you would have talked to me at 15, I probably would have talked to you as if I was like a super trainer because I didn't know any better. But I remember when I actually learned about the terms bulking and cutting, I was probably 14 or 15 at that time. And since I was skinny, you know, I started at 130 to 135 pounds. Cutting was not an option, you know, like I wanted to be bigger. I needed to add more muscle. And I want to say I was around 16 or so. I decided to do my first cut. This is kind of funny because I did not have the discipline to do this. And at 16, you know, doing an extra hour of cardio was not really that big of a deal for you. But I remember putting my diet together, which was absolutely atrocious, by the way. I don't even know how I lost any weight doing this at all in hindsight. But again, that's that good genetically gifted metabolism, also being 16 years old and also being active all the time outside of lifting weights. So that's how I was able to pull that off. But I got up to like 180 pounds. I decided, you know, I want abs for the first time in my life. And I kind of achieved it. Not great, but you know, and they looked okay. But I remember I would do my cardio. And as you guys know, when you diet, you cardio, it stimulates your appetite, your metabolism. 
and I would get so hungry that I just couldn't stand it. And I remember my parents would have like a chocolate cake. That was my go-to was chocolate cake or German chocolate cake to be specific. And it'd be sitting there on the counter and I'd be like, oh, I have a little piece, you know, it's okay. You know, it's not that big of a deal. The next thing you know, this little piece turned into like a thousand calorie piece. And all that cardio I just did went right out the damn window. So now in hindsight, like as a competitor post retirement, it's like, I don't understand that because I don't want to beat on my my knees, my ankles, my hips, my lower back. I don't want to I don't want to beat on all that to do more cardio just for that 10 minutes of eating. That's just kind of my uh, little TED talk of the day. Is you know if you guys have a goal, it's going to suck. You know there's a reason why other people can't get in shape. It's why it's not easy to get in shape. You're going to have to make sacrifices along the way, and sometimes you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? And for some people, it may not be worth it. You know, if you have a wife and kids that you want to spend quality time with and, you know, that quality time just so happens involves food and you're not a competitor, maybe it's not worth it for you to do something like that. But, you know, if you're wanting to get on stage, you have to got to put all that aside. You know, you can't be that guy who has a slice of cheesecake at nighttime and then think they're going to wake up the next morning and do an hour of cardio. You may break even with it, but you're not moving forward. You're not progressing your physique whether it be through muscularity or through conditioning, you know, you're just maintaining, you're kind of stagnant if you get my drift on that. So anyways, just my uh, two cents on that. So take that for what it's worth. And if you guys really want to diet, really want to get in shape, you're going to have to suffer to some extent out.